Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be discussing some non-fiction books that I've enjoyed lately. A lot of the time, fiction gets more attention, so I thought I would talk about some non-fiction books and also recommend them. A friend of mine asked me what books I would recommend for her to read over her summer holiday next month, and I meant the first option that came to my mind was a, a novel that was fiction. So I thought, why do I also recommend non-fiction books as well that are great to check out over the summer period or any time? for your interest. So today I'll be talking about two books that have, I've enjoyed recently. So the first was Hope in a Ballet Shoe and that is by Michaela and Elaine the Prince. And the second is Raif Badawi. Raif Badawi's book and it's actually written by his wife and I'll talk about both books and then let you know what they're about and whether I enjoyed them but I did based on the title because the title of the video is non-fiction recommendations. Hope in a Ballet Shoe is about Michaela the Prince and she's a young child she's, she was born in Sierra Leone to Sierra Leonean parents born around the time of the civil war in Sierra Leone and her parents died during the war and her parents since, her, since she became an orphan at a very young age she's her uncle takes her to an orphanage and while she's there she's adopted by American parents and so she moves from Sierra Leone to the United States but while she was in Sierra Leone she once came across this magazine that let her know that that where she saw a ballet dancer dance um, on the paper and that made her think she would want to one day become a ballet dancer so when she gets to the, to the United States fortunately her parents are very supportive of her dream to become a ballet dancer and so she goes on to train and right from when she was a child she keeps taking lessons and one of the things I found really inspiring about Hope in a Ballet Shoe is the fact that Michaela she's on the cover but what I found inspiring about her story is that She's someone who never gives up, someone who works very hard. She puts in a lot of effort to become where she is, where she's at today. And even though she was in an industry, so ballet isn't known to have a lot of women of color, but she actually goes on to excel in this, in ballet. This book is tailored towards younger readers. So it's tailored to teenagers, I would say people in secondary school. So I would recommend this if you have maybe a younger sibling or you're around the age bracket of 11 to 17, you'd enjoy. Even if you're older, it's still a story that anyone can relate to and enjoy. And what I like about Michaela, who is on the front cover about her story, she's very, she's quite inspiring. She's, she's excelled in an industry that is dominated a lot by people who do not look like her. And she's gone on to stand out. She's also written another book that's for much younger readers so I think children who are very little and it's called ballerina dreams or so and in the book she talks about her story but in the I think it's simpler formats for younger people to enjoy and I think I actually saw the one she wrote for um, very young, little children in a bookshop one day when I went to buy a ticket for an event and I was surprised I didn't know it was written by Michaela so when I went in I was like oh this is a um, black ballerina um, ballet dancer on the cover who could possibly have written this because it's not a common story and then I looked at it and I saw Michaela de Prince her name on the book as well and I was inspired that she's not only dancing in ballet and making it for herself but she's also inspiring other young people and even if even if you're not in, maybe not interested in becoming a ballet dancer or working in dance industry. It's still an inspiring story in that if you live in a place where you're not necessarily in majority, you can still stand out and still excel in whatever you do. So I think that's what I found really great about the book and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something to um, read or you you have a younger sibling or a cousin who might be interested, who might need some inspiration to read. It's a great book. I would recommend it. I give it five stars. The second book I'll be talking about is Raif Badawi's Avoid The Voice of Freedom and it was written by his wife who's on the cover. So she she's married she, she's married to Raif Badawi as I said she's his wife and what happens who is Raif Badawi if you're wondering he's an activist he was an activist he's still alive but what happens is he he they live in they, they're from Saudi Arabia and in Saudi Arabia, there's more, there are a lot of limits on citizens' rights. So women maybe are not allowed to drive. Women have to dress in a certain way. So Raif um, Badawi, he decides, he starts a website 
a couple of years ago where he begins to write about the situation in Saudi Arabia. He's calling for more freedom, for gender equality, so women's rights. And what happens is one day the Saudi government, they, um, he's taken away and imprisoned. He's still in prison today, at least the last time I checked, because while I was reading, I said maybe he's out of prison already and this was a story written while he was still there. But he's still in prison and there's still a lot of campaigning to get him out of prison and he was he was sentenced to i think 10 years in prison and 1000 lashes he's already had the first 50 lashes uh, so sh with the cane or with flog so he's been, so he's been flogged 50 times he had 50 lashes and he, there was a lot of international outrage against the time he was flogged in public so the second set of lashes haven't taken place even though that the first time he was beaten so the 50 lashes that was a very long time ago and he's still not out of there. So his wife is actively campaigning to get him out of the, to get him out of prison. And he's, he also has very young children as well. And they're not able to see their parents. In the book, his wife documents how she tried to hide the fact that um, their, their father was in prison in Saudi Arabia because the children naturally you associate prison with bad things. You don't really think of someone being an activist campaigning for justice and still be imprisoned. So, he has children and they're not, able to see, they're not able to see their father and I hope one day he gets released soon but right now he's still in prison. I enjoyed reading it. I think one of the things I liked about Raif Badawi's story is how someone can stand up for what is right even in the face of challenges. So even though they, there's a lot of there's a lot going on against their family, even within their extended family. So Raif's parents' father was very against their son having a website and speaking against the, situa the condition in Saudi Arabia but so they, he and his wife they stand, for, they stand up for a lot of things even in the midst of uh, obstacles and even in the midst of oppression and I think that's something because even while I was reading I was thinking why didn't he just give up like he could have lived a peaceful life in Saudi Arabia at least he had his wife he had his children he had a business and he wouldn't be in prison but sometimes when when there's a need for change sometimes people have to stand up for injustice and may go through very difficult times so it's also i think both books have something similar so right but our story and michaela's story in hoping and ballet showing that they're both very inspiring books and also talk about people standing up and not wanting wanting a change in wherever they wherever they find themselves and the final book I'll be talking about, I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know if I can recommend it because I think I need to read it to the end before I can say that. So I've read, I mean, the first half of the book is called I Call Myself a Feminist. I found the book while I was at an event about feminist publishing. So they were talking about books that touch on feminist subjects. So I got interested in reading this. It's written by 25 women who are under 30. So it just talks about the, the need for, even though Looking at my situation, I'm a woman and I would say, okay, things have improved greatly for women, but is there still a need for feminism? And they, so there's arguments about that. There's also discussion about maybe how we treat tra um, people from LGBT communities in the book. And it's just, it's just very insightful in that, although the, with women, the stories I've read are actually about women who live in, in, in the UK. I, I don't know if there are other writers from across the world in the book right now, but they're all talking about the need for feminism, the need for gender equality, and why feminism, even though people look at it as is this bad word, it actually isn't because it's mainly about people just wanting gender equality. So I'm still reading this and I think I'm going to enjoy it. It's just a, it's a couple of essays. They're all quite short and I'm finding it quite insightful at the moment. So all three books I would recommend. They're all actually, they all have one thing in common. They're all written by women. So I'll just recap briefly. So the first one I spoke about was Hope in a Ballet Shoe, which I enjoyed. I would recommend this if you're a younger reader or just if you want something inspiring to read. And this one, Rife Badawi's story, if you're interested in social change, standing up for injustice wherever you live, this is another one to be interested in. And another thing I must say about Rife Badawi is that his spokeswoman, so a lady who's actually campaigning for his release, Elham Mania, she was actually my lecturer while I was at university. So when I went, I did study abroad, so I went to Switzerland for a couple of, for a couple of months while I, while, I, while I was in my th final year of university. So I was at the University of Zurich and I did a class on gender and politics in Arab states and my lecturer there is a spokes, um, Raif Badawi's spokeswoman 
and she campaigns for his release and she's actually in the acknowledgements of the book that was part of the reason why I picked up because I was reading through the acknowledgements and I saw that my lecturer's name was inside the book which was interesting so if you're interested in gender politics in Arab states in the situation in Saudi Arabia social change is a really good book and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video